to make sense of it all. We have with us CDV science and technology expert Dan Riskin. Hi, Dan. Great to see you. Great to see you. I feel like, you know, judging on what we're talking about, I should be in the studio with you in case a solar flare takes out our communication link. But we'll just hope things last through this next few minutes. <laughs> For most of human history, the sun has been a dependable friend. We wake beneath its light, grow food under its warmth, and trust that tomorrow it will rise again just the same. But every so often, that calm golden star shows another side, a volatile one, explosive, unpredictable, capable of lashing out across space with enough force to scorch technology blind satellites, and send our planet's magnetic field into chaos. Now, NASA says that side of the sun may be returning. A new study is sending a quiet but serious warning. The sun is beginning to wake up from a period of unusual calm. And if scientists are right, we could be heading into decades of heightened and potentially dangerous solar activity, a time when space weather becomes more violent than anyone expected. To understand why that matters, it helps to know how the sun behaves. Are you serious or are you joking? How seriously can this really happen where you know systems will go black i am joking for this for the next five minutes for sure so okay. what sort of got the alarm going is that there was this this huge eruption on the surface of the sun it was back on may 14th and so uh, we saw that it, it ejected a ton of material. That material did a glancing blow, not off the Earth, but off of our magnetic field. Our star operates on a rhythm, an 11-year cycle defined by sunspots. When the cycle begins, the sun is relatively calm, showing only a few dark spots on its surface. As the years pass, those spots multiply. The star becomes more active, releasing storms, radiation, and immense arcs of magnetic energy. Eventually, the activity peaks, then slowly fades, and the cycle begins again. This rise and fall, known as the solar cycle, is just one layer. Beneath it lies a longer 22-year magnetic cycle called the Hale cycle, during which the sun's magnetic field flips and then flips back again. These patterns help scientists predict when the most explosive events are likely to happen. But the sun doesn't always follow its own rules. Throughout history, there have been strange eras when solar activity dropped unexpectedly and stayed low for decades. From 1645 to 1715, the sun entered what's now called the Maunder Minimum, a prolonged quiet spell during which sunspots almost vanished, temperatures on Earth dropped, winters grew harsher. Centuries later, another muted era followed, the Dalton Minimum, beginning around 1790. Because of this history, many experts believe the sun was heading toward yet another deep rest. The early 2000s seemed to support that idea. Sunspot numbers were trending down. The most recent solar maximum, the peak around 2013 and 2014, was unusually weak. By the end of that decade, researchers were openly wondering if we were approaching a long, subdued phase. Then everything changed. Starting around 2000, the data quietly began to bend in the opposite direction. The decline stopped, solar wind strength turned upward, magnetic activity began to climb, sunspot numbers rose. Without warning, the sun, instead of powering down, seemed to be gearing up. The new NASA-supported study published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters confirms what many had suspected over the last few years. The sun is reawakening, and the intensity we've seen recently may be only the beginning. According to plasma physicist Jamie Yashinsky, the study's lead author, all signs point to an active future, possibly spanning multiple decades. Um, but it was a good wake up call. You know, it's a little bit like when you walk into a saloon and somebody fires their gun and it hits the chandelier. You pay attention to what's going on, right? You don't, well, I hit the chandelier. Right. I guess I don't have to even pay attention anymore. No, you pay attention to the person with the gun. And in this case, it's the sun shooting off these uh, chunks of its corona out into space. And it, these the amount of energy is just hard to wrap your head around because, I mean, the, the, the sun is so big that what looks like, oh, it's just a little sort of bright spot on the sun. I guess that's not that big. That's like five Earths. I mean, it's huge. Wow. It's bigger than any explosion you could ever imagine on our planet. So uh, these are these are huge events and they can have repercussions. But for right now, you don't need to you know worry about this conversation, this moment. You don't have to hide under your desk today. So, so, so what do we have to really worry about here? In his words, the sun is slowly waking up. This wasn't supposed to happen. The last solar maximum, while visually spectacular, wasn't especially intense. The next one was predicted to be similar, moderate, arriving gradually, but predictions soon fell apart. The new cycle began in late 2019. The Space Weather Prediction Center, with experts from NASA and NOAA, estimated that solar maximum would arrive around 2025 and that it would likely be weak. But as the years passed, the sun ignored those forecasts. Activity ramped up early. Sunspot counts exploded 
exploded and NASA and NOAA were forced to issue their first ever revised outlook just in time for reality to overtake theory. As it turned out, Solar Maximum arrived faster and hit harder than expected. From 2024 onward, the Sun unleashed an unusually high number of X-Class solar flares, the most powerful type of explosion the star can produce. Enormous bursts of plasma, known as coronal mass ejections, hurled themselves across space more frequently. Some collided with Earth, and when they did, we noticed. One of the strongest events erupted in May 2024. The storm slammed into Earth's magnetic field with enough force to create auroras, visible across latitudes that hadn't seen them in centuries. People watched pink, purple, and green curtains of light spill across skies normally reserved for midday blue. It was beautiful, but it was also expensive. That single geomagnetic storm caused more than $500 million in damage. Power grids strained. Some systems temporarily failed. There were disruptions in communication networks. And while scientists say we got lucky that the storm could have been far worse, the event was a preview of the kind of trouble that frequent intense solar storms could bring. The new NASA study warns that this level of activity may not be a brief spike. Instead, it could be the new normal for decades. That prospect raises difficult questions. Unlike during the Maunder Minimum, when humans lived without reliance on electricity or satellites, modern civilization depends on fragile networks orbiting high above Earth. GPS guidance, aviation, finance, weather forecasting, internet infrastructure, all depend on satellites vulnerable to solar storms. A powerful burst of radiation can disable or destroy them outright. This isn't hypothetical. During the infamous Carrington event of 1859, the strongest solar storm ever recorded, the sky lit up so intensely that people could read newspapers at midnight. Telegraph systems sparked, caught fire, and shocked operators. If a storm of similar strength struck us today, experts warned that satellites could be knocked out of orbit, power grids could collapse, and global communication could be crippled in minutes. Recent simulations suggest that a modern Carrington-class event could wipe out most satellites around Earth a blow that would take decades to recover from. And the chances of such an event increase if the sun is entering a prolonged era of heightened activity. Despite decades of research, scientists still don't fully understand why the sun's rhythm has shifted. The pattern doesn't match the hail cycle alone. It doesn't resemble previous minimums or maximums. One theory proposed earlier this year suggests the cause may be a longer, lesser known 100 year cycle called the Centennial Gleisberg Cycle. If true, the current resurgence could represent a natural natural upswing, one that's been building for generations. But the new study doesn't commit to that explanation at all. It simply acknowledges that something is happening, something researchers can observe but not yet explain. Yashinsky puts it plainly, the longer term trends are a lot less predictable and we don't completely understand them. That uncertainty is part of what makes the situation unsettling. We can track storms and monitor sunspots. We can measure radiation spikes and issue warnings, but predicting the long term mood of a star remains beyond us. What we do know is that the sun is behaving differently, and that our world is now far more vulnerable to its volatility. This won't mean apocalypse, but it could mean inconvenience on a scale few living people have experienced. Imagine widespread GPS failures disrupting airlines and shipping routes. Imagine power stations overheating and shutting down in multiple regions at once. Imagine banking systems, telecommunications networks, and emergency services operating through unstable signals, or none at all. Some scientists worry that our technological infrastructure has advanced faster than our ability to shield it. Satellites have limited defenses, global power grids are aging, and space weather forecasting, while vastly improved, is still a young science. The irony is that while we understand planets light years away, we still lack full clarity about the star closest to us, the one that makes life on Earth possible. For now, all we can do is watch. The current solar maximum is still unfolding, and the next cycle, beginning roughly in the 2030s may reveal whether this waking trend continues or intensifies further. If the new study is correct, we may find ourselves living through a period when major solar storms are not rare events but regular realities. Storms that challenge our technology, redefine preparedness, and remind us that the sun is not a quiet lamp hanging in the sky but a vast nuclear engine constantly in motion.
There's a strange beauty in that truth. The same storms that threaten our satellites are the storms that paint the skies with auroras stretching from horizon to horizon. The same energy that could scramble our power grids is the energy that once ignited life on Earth. The sun creates and destroys, calms and erupts, and we orbit at its mercy. For now, scientists will continue studying the data, revising models, and trying to understand why the sun has changed course. The rest of us will do what humans have always done. Look up, because because the sun may be waking up, and if it is, the next few decades could be some of the most dramatic our civilization has ever witnessed, not because of what happens on Earth, but because of what happens 93 million miles away.